Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt and we've got another body armor test today from Stealth Armor Systems. This is another one of their Hexar models. This particular one is a lot lighter. This is their boron carbide strike face. This guy weighs four pounds, 4.36 pounds and approximately 930 thousandths thick. It measured a little thinner and thicker depending on where I put my dial calipers. What makes our Hexar unique is that it's rifle rated, meaning it can stop M80 ball, and we're going to test against some 5.56 threats, but it's flexible, or semi-flexible, you can see it flexes a little bit right there. I do believe our Hexar predates our Fraz, and like the Fraz, this is a level 3 in conjunction with plate, meaning that I must run a level 3A backer behind it to maintain that threat rating. We're going to see what the upper limits of this particular plate is going to be today. We're going to throw some 5.56 and some 308 threats at it. I'm very data driven on my channel, so I stick to a lot of NAJ constants. It makes our videos a little longer, but I feel that we can take more data away from them. So I shoot at 45 feet, that is the official NIJ testing distance. I shoot at zero degrees because that is worst case for the armor. Since this employs a ceramic strike face, I've also gone ahead and dropped it on its face two times per the NIJ standard with a drop test rig that I built. We use this giant clay briefcase here filled with Roma Plastilina number one clay donated by Chavant. This provides us with a compressible media for the armor to act against and we're not wasting energy by just throwing the plate on the ground and the flying everywhere when you shoot it. I also use a chronograph so we have velocity data. It's around 45 to 50 degrees outside today. The clay has been warmed with a heater beforehand, it's around 70 degrees. Another day, another dollar. We actually recorded the introduction for this B4C plate a few weeks ago and due to weather constraints and time, we're just now getting to test it. It's about 45 degrees outside today, but we have the clay heated up. Like the alumina version, we're gonna start off with our 5.56 threats and go to 308 and then maybe some 300 blackout threats if I have time. But I have the three standards that I like to go through with 5.56. I have M193, 55 grain full metal jacket. I have M855, 62 grain with a conical steel tip. Then M855A1, that is the Army's current issue ball round. It has a much larger and harder steel tip with a copper core. We have a 22 inch TC compass here with a turbo 5.56 on it. So these are maximum potential, you know, real world velocities. Not sure if I'll get all these in the uh, magazine or not. This is Independence M193, so we should see over 3,200 feet per second today because it's a little cold outside. So it tends to get slowed down a little bit. All right him in there. The one thing we noted with the Hexar Illumina version is these are really good at taking lots of hits because of how many tiles there are. So this first shot I'm going to place the upper left of the plate. Good velocity there. This one will be right next to it. Should be the last M193. Now the eight M855. Last M855, I think, right? This is on the second row of my dots on the right hand side, by the way. Yep, now we're on to the A1. So we'll be on the third row now.
Cool. Now time for our actual level three threat. We have 308 with a 22 inch TC compass in our JK armament rifle kit. So we're gonna see maximum velocity out of this surplus Poon Sang or PMC M80 ball, 145, 150 grain full metal jacket. Usually has lead core. Sometimes the jacket is bimetal. We're gonna take four shots at this. And then I think we'll go down and check the plate and see what's left of it. Like I said, being that these are really small tiles, it's really good at stopping lots of threats, but when you get into 308, I think these smaller tiles potentially can hurt its multi-strike capability with these larger rounds. If I get the old mag oh, magazine in there. This one I'm gonna actually place in a compromised area between the shots number three, or two and three of M855, so right where it says Hexar. Hopefully it was where I wanted to put it. I can't see. Uh, yeah, I think it was where I wanted it. This one will be below shot number four of M855. Okay. Then this shot will be down by the date on the bottom of the plate. Okay. And then this one will be right below where it says drop test. That one I think was a little close to the edge there. All right, we've well exceeded the design parameters for level three and even the new RF one and two standards. M193 number one, two, three and four. Those are all considered fair hits by the NIJ standard. They're two inches apart. M855, number one, number two, number three, and number four. Then our A1, M855 A1, number one, number two, number three. Then when we went to the M80 ball, I think I need to check the scope on that, or maybe I'm getting a little bit of rubbing on that suppressor, but I wanted to place that first M80 ball shot here and put them over here. Uh, that was so that number one, we are, that is not an NIJ fair hit. Shot number one. Number two over here, that's a fair hit. Number three, and then number four, that one is literally on the edge. That one, that one might be a little sketchy. Since this is a, in conjunction with plate, there is the level 3A backer behind it. It's the same uh, 3A backer that I've been using all along. And I actually don't think we have a, maybe on this corner here, because it pushed it out the edge, but we'll check the backer. But even that compromised area M80 ball shot, we'll check down there too. We'll, we'll have to peel this cover off when we're at home to check for any final penetrations, because sometimes it's really hard to make a judgment call because it'll just break the uh, cover off. I would say our 3A backer has definitely got its use. But it stopped that round. That corner shot, you know, there's, you know, obviously there's a big dent in our clay here. And I've got polyethylene everywhere, but it stopped it. That is, that is amazing. These are from other tests. Those are not pass-throughs on this test. As far as our back face goes, the most that we're gonna see is from our 308 threats. So this guy over here, I would consider a good area. 36 millimeters on that one that it stopped. This guy down here, 28 millimeters. And then our corner is gonna be the worst At right around 43. I did heat this clay up. You can tell it's not like 100 degrees, so it, but it is pretty soft. It's been heating for about an hour and a half now. So like I said, it's a representation of potential back face. You could see more. In, in an NIJ test, they would never shoot this close to the edge of the plate because of how the bullet can react and then you know, it basically can dive down and push its way out of that plate. But that is very, very good performance considering how many hits I just put on this plate. 
as Al would put it, I'm not happy until I get a ruh oh raggy. I have two more threats I want to shoot at his B4C Hexar, and that is in our 300 blackout, but these are a little special. We have M2AP and M80A1. Effectively, the M2AP is like 1,700 feet per second, so that's equivalent to like a 650 plus yard engagement. The M80A1, I think, is 1,900 to 2,000 feet per second, so I'm not sure what that engagement range is, but I would imagine it's quite a few hundred yards out. We have a 10 and a half inch pistol upper here. The primary arms, Gen 1 Cyclops on there, Vortex magnifier, don't have it dialed in very well. Yankee Hill Phantom M2. We'll take the M2 AP shots first. This one will be on the right side of the plate. I put some orange marks down there. Then this one will be on the other, or the right, the first one was on the left hand side. This one's on the right side. And I see some Kevlar, or some PE moving down there. Our M80A1 shots will be in the upper left of the plate. And then this one will be on the right. All right. A little low on the velocity there. Let's go see what we did. Okay, M2AP shot number one was right here. Shot number two was right here. Definitely consider this a fair hit. We are close to the edge of this plate, but from looking at the Illumina version, this does have a full edge to edge strike face. He's using smaller tiles, so those go all the way out to the edge. This one, I would probably consider that a fair hit. It's about two inches from that one. But our M80A1 though, that was an inch from that M193 shot. I wanted it up here, but the offset on that scope is, I need to get it dialed in, but we were down there. And then that second shot was right there on top of the M193 shot number three. The plate's fully compromised. At this point, like I said, for shits and giggles, just because I want a penetration, Looks like we have shots number one, two, three, and four. And we have full penetrations on shots number one, two, three, and four. There's our shot from there, 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 and there. So that particular bullet design, even at that engagement distance, on a compromised plate, not going to stop it. Ruh-o raggy. All right, one of everyone's favorite parts is the teardown. Now our Hexar 3 B4C should be pretty much identical to the Illumina version, but we'll take a look inside. Here's our nylon cover that we removed. Here is a drop face protectant foam, pretty high density, not overly thick, just enough to do the job. Then here is our Aramid fibers that, or a layer that actually cover our little tiles, honeycomb tiles, hexagon that you see in there. Quite a bit of crunchy. Here is our polyethylene backer. Like I said, with Al, very good attention to detail. Since these have to remain flexible, they aren't pressed. So then he's taken thread and had the outer edge sewn together so that they stay together. Here's the back of it. You can see there were our four penetrations only from the M2AP and the M80A1 from our 300 blackout. This is certainly not a, you know, scientific way of proving this, but this is B4C. And from what I've seen in the past, when we get into silicon carbide, it looks the same, but it tends to leave more staining and mess on the table and like all of your gloves, it doesn't want to come off. This stuff seems to stay more powder-like and cleans up pretty easily. Here is our little B4C tile, hexagon, 270 thousandths thick, or for those guys across the pond, 6.8 millimeters. 
The one thing that I like about what Stealth Armor Systems is doing is it's actually very hard to get these out of this panel. I had to obviously cut this Kevlar away with an X-Acto knife, and I actually had to use a screwdriver to pry them up. So he's using a lot of good adhesive to keep these panels together as long as possible. So that means there's better chance of surviving multiple hits. There's quite a few tiles that you can see on this plate that are still able to take hits. When I perform these tests, not only do I enjoy looking forward to testing the ballistic limits of our armor panels, I also enjoy building relationships with these companies so that we can test future products. Al's Hexar Flexible Rifle Armor Systems is very impressive. I think the B4C performed better in my opinion than the Illumina version. Although the B4C will come with a higher cost than the Illumina version, it does offer a weight savings. I like that Stealth Armor Systems is using smaller tiles that get us all the way to a true edge-to-edge -edge coverage. You know, so if they're advertising a 10 by 12 plate, you're getting very close to the actual 10 by 12 of ceramic coverage. Someone had commented how the flexible armor systems compare to the single curve, multi-curve, or even flat plates. And it's really dependent on your particular body type. I had my wife run in both of these panels and she told me she didn't really feel there was much of a difference between those and her multi-curve steel although the thicker plates for me tend to do better because when i'm moving around they don't move as much and then when i wore the flexible ones i was able to get myself in that pistol shooting position easier and the plate tends to flex more and conform to your body without having a bunch of sharp points on it so your mileage may vary with that one well, it's about time for me to get the heck out of here because it's actually Christmas Eve when I recorded this video. So a belated Merry Christmas to you all. At the end of my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible. Number one is my Patreon supporters. Number two is Al over at Stealth Armor Systems who sent me these products to destroy with no strings attached. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range. Number one is my Patreon supporters. Number two is Al over at Stealth Armor Systems who sent us a maraud of products to destroy with no fingers. No fingers, no fingers attached. <laughs> okay.